Welcome back to our channel. This was how we left our assembly. So in this top part, we've now cut the ribs and the holes. Damn, Sean. In the bottom part, we don't have either. So we can add those to the bottom. First, let's select that bottom part and open it. And first, let's cut the hole for the screws. This time, we want to use a counterbore going from the bottom, so the screw head can fit inside. But actually, if we look from the side, we haven't really cut a flat face that we can use for this. This one in the middle is flat, but it's at the wrong height. It's too low, so we are going to add a new plane. So, go to this kind of view, select the top plane, and then hold on control. And then, just drop a new plane down and set it somewhere below the bottom of the controller, so 50mm is a good distance. Now we can use this plane to create our hole. I'm going to select the hole wizard. I'm going to choose counter bore, the first option. I'm going to choose unsymmetric, pan crosshead, M4, through all. Then go to the position tab, and just left click once to choose that new plane that we added. So we are now placing holes on the up plane. And you can go to a top view, and you can line them up with the standoffs. And then before you press OK, let's have a look in 3D. So the holes are lined up in the right place, but the counter bore, this wider section at the bottom, isn't really deep enough, doesn't even cut into the model. To fix this, let's go back to the type tab, and then go all the way to the bottom, and select head clearance, and just increase that clearance until we are actually cutting the counter bore into the model. So if you look from the edge, for me about 18mm works well. So we want to keep a little bit of material at the top, where the screw will fit onto, but it really depends on where exactly you made the cut when we made the split line. And then if we press OK, you can see the screws go in there, and now the screw head will be hidden inside the part, but it will sit on that little step inside the hole. Now we can add the ribs to this half, and we've actually already cut the sketch in the other half, so we can reuse that in this half. To do this, go back to the assembly by pressing Ctrl and Tab, and then edit this bottom half in the assembly. So click on it and press edit part. And then I'm going to scarf a sketch on the highest face, so it will be this flat one in the middle. Now we can reuse that sketch from the other half. So firstly, I'm going to expand the other half part. I'm going to go down and find the ribs feature. I'm going to expand that and let the sketch underneath it. And then press convert entities. So now we've converted over those lines and circles from the other sketch. And we can use those to make the ribs in this part. So go to features, extruded post space, and let's choose thin feature again. Let's set 2mm mid plane and go downwards towards the rest of the body. And choose up to body. And then just select that body. So now we have the ribs in place, but we still need to cut away the profile from the side. So again, we can reuse the sketch from the other half. So in the part that we are editing, the bottom part, Let's start sketch on the appropriate plane, for me it's the front plane. Then expand the other half, the top half, expand that rib cut feature, select the sketch and press convert entities. And we can then use that sketch to create an extruded cut. We can go through all both. And if we look from the bottom, we want to be cutting upwards like this, so we just want to cut away the ribs. We don't want to cut away the body of the controller, so I press OK to make that cut. And then in the bodies to keep, let's choose selected bodies, and let's just keep that main body. So for me, it's just this first option here. And now we can just rename those features. And I'm going to call this one rib, and then this one rib cut. And then we can exit editing the part. And the bottom part is looking pretty good, so depending exactly what you're modeling, you can add all different types of ribs. But for now, this is a fairly simple example of how you could use them. Now to finish off this video, we are just going to add a bit of cut out to the top part, so we can fit a PCB inside there. That's going to have all of the electronics and the buttons for the controller on. So I'm going to open the top part now. I'm going to start sketch on this cut face in the middle. And then go normal too. And then I'm going to get the center rectangle. And I'm going to draw a rectangle at the origin, and drag it out to about here. Try not to get any of the automatic relations. Then let's set the height as 45, and the length as 200, so it completely covers that circular area at the side. Looking at the edge here, it's a little bit too wide, because if we cut upwards, it's going to cut away an area of the outer wall there. So I'm going to reduce the width down to 195, and now that's completely inside the wall. And then let's just do a cut extrude upwards through all, so it cuts through those ribs above it. And then we'll also do direction too, 
and will cut downwards 1.6 mm. So this is just cutting out a little cap that the PCB is going to fit into between the two halves of the controller. So now we've cut away that area for the PCB and that's going to be sandwiched in that cap. Then you can rename that as PCB cut and save your part. To recap this video, we started off with the bottom part. We added the counterbore holes first. We had to add the plane because that wasn't a flat face that we could use to add the counterbores on. Then we added the ribs. We did this in the assembly so that we could reuse the sketch from the other half. And we made this using a thin feature extrude, the same as the previous video. Then we cut away the profile from the side by reusing the side cut sketch. And then just doing a cut extrude through all and just keeping the bodies that we wanted. And then we're going to the top part. We cut away an area for the PCB to sit into. And in the next video, we'll create that PCB directly in the assembly. Thank you for watching, hopefully it can help a little and be useful.